on to nuclear equations. This is the one time in chemistry when we can actually change one atom into another. Chemical reactions, by and large, do not cause one atom to become another. What we start with, what we end with. But in the situation of nuclear chemistry, I can actually change a gold atom into a lead atom through radioactive decay. There are four different types of radioactive decay that I want to cover in this video. The first of them, let's see if I got enough pens to do these all in different colors. The first one is called alpha decay. Alpha decay is the least dangerous of the decays. Anytime alpha decay happens, um, your atom is undergoing, or it gives off an alpha particle. Okay, symbol for alpha. It's a helium nucleus. So this is how you usually see it represented. It's a helium nucleus that's had all of its electrons ripped off. So um, whenever I have an atom undergoing alpha decay, let's say for example, I have, for example, I have a nitrogen Fifteen atom undergoing alpha decay. So when I write that equation, the first thing I'm going to do over here on the left hand side is I'm going to write the symbol for nitrogen with the mass number on the top and the atomic number on the bottom. Since it's undergoing alpha decay, it is going to emit an alpha particle. So my larger nucleus is going to break into two smaller pieces, a helium nucleus and something else. So my mass number is going to go down by 4. So 15 minus 4 is 11. My atomic number is going to go down by 2. 7 minus 2 is 5. So I have effectively created a second nucleus. I have to go to my periodic table and find atomic number 5. It is, in fact, boron. So when nitrogen-15 undergoes alpha decay, I create a helium nucleus and a boron-11 atom. General formula for that. So I have my element, whatever it is, mass number on top, atomic number on bottom. It's going to decay into an alpha particle and whatever the mass number is minus 4 and whatever the protons are minus 2 and whatever my new element is. Uh, I guess we'll call it X2 if you will. Eh. So these are two different nuclei. I'll try to find a better symbol by the time I get to the next one. Our second type of decay. Let's see if I got a different color pen. And we'll do purple. Let's see if my purple pen's working today. My second type of decay is called beta decay. A beta particle can be represented two different ways. A beta particle is nothing more, ooh, this pen didn't write very well, than a fast-moving electron. So it has no mass and a negative one charge. This is one way you can represent a beta particle. The second way is with the symbol of beta with the same charges on it, charge and no mass. So let's say, for example, let's say this same nitrogen underwent beta decay. It's going to emit a beta particle, as one would expect. And this time, what's actually happening is that one of your neutrons in the nucleus is actually decaying. It is breaking apart into the proton and electron that comprises that neutron. So my mass number is going to stay the same because even though I've lost a neutron, I've gained a proton. So my mass or my atomic number is going to go up by one. I'm going to go to my periodic table, which tells me that atomic number eight is in fact oxygen. So again, we have a neutron decaying. My pen will write into the proton and a beta particle, not just any uh, electron, but a fast moving one, a beta particle. The beta particle whizzes off into space, leaving the proton behind. 
So, general formula for this guy. We start off with the mass on top, protons on bottom. It emits a beta particle. I'll write it in the second form just so you can see it. Plus some new nuclei with a mass number that is the same and our atomic number plus one since that neutron again decayed into a proton and a beta particle. The third type of decay that we need to talk about, let's do pink, is positron emission. Oops. Positron emission, a positron is the close cousin of the beta particle. But instead of a negative charge, this is an effectively a positron, an electron with a positive charge. So two ways I can write it with the E or the beta symbol. So let's continue with our nitrogen 15 just for the sake of consistency. So my nitrogen atom is going to emit a positron. And what is actually happening is I have a neutron again in my nucleus that is, um, or actually we're forming a neutron this time. My atom is grabbing an electron, grabbing a proton, shoving them together, and making a neutron. So this time, my mass number is again staying the same, but I'm going to lose a proton because it has combined with an electron to form a neutron. Apparently this atom needed more neutrons this time. I have to go to my periodic table. Atomic number six is in fact carbon. So we are combining proton with an electron to make a neutron in positron emission. This occurrence causes a positron to be emitted. The last of our, let's see if this pink's work. The last, oh I didn't give you the summary, I'm sorry. So our mass with our protons emits a beta particle my mass number stayed the same, but I lost a proton. Last is our electron capture. This pen is apparently being cranky too. This, I'm going to change pen colors, is when we actually capture an electron. So this is the only one that looks different. So my atom is going to reach out and capture an electron, a beta particle. We'll use the same nitrogen atom for consistency. Just for the record, I am fully aware of the fact that a nitrogen-15 nucleus would not undergo all of these decays. I'm just using nitrogen-15 as a, a consistent example to show you the different ways of decay. In this one, my atom is going to take, again, it's going to take one of these protons, combine it with this electron in order to make a neutron. So my mass stays the same, but my atomic number is going to go down one again. The difference between electron capture and positron emission, even though they both resulted in the same nucleus, is the fact that this one uses an electron from its own rings and emits a positron during that combination. In electron capture, we are capturing an electron from elsewhere, creating a cascade effect through the rings of that atom. Um, so again, in this one we are again combining an electron with a proton to create a neutron. So the general form for this one again is to grab an electron to combine it with whatever our original nuclei is to give us the same mass number but one less proton. In case you forgot, the whole purpose behind nuclear decay is because there is apparently an unstable ratio of neutrons and protons in the nucleus. That is what creates the strong nuclear force that holds the nucleus together. The atom wants about one and a half neutrons to protons. And if that ratio is not correct within the atom, the atom will decay, radioactive decay, to attempt to create a more stable nuclei through a radioactive decay series.